Hello everyone and welcome back to Fallout 76. Today we'll be exploring the Lying Low questline that was introduced all the way back in 2019 with the Wild Appalachia update. This is by far my favorite quest in Fallout 76 and one of my favorite Fallout quests of all time. We've got conspiracy theories, mysterious monsters, corporate corruption, links to other characters in the game, and even links to Fallout 3. There's a lot we'll discover, so let's not waste any time. Remember, if you like videos like this one and want to see more, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It's a big help to the channel, and it's the best way to make sure you don't miss any of the Fallout 76 videos I post every week on the channel. Let's get going. As we travel around Appalachia, we'll find a collection of posters at every train station. This one reads, Sheep Squatch Ate My Brother. For more information, come to Van Lowe Taxidermy in Lewisburg. Well, who can resist an invitation like that? We'll head to Lewisburg to begin the Lying Low quest line, where we untangle the connection between the Sheep Squatch and Calvin Van Lowe. When we eventually make our way to Lewisburg, we find that the town still has some inhabitants. They're just a bit more dangerous than they might have been before the war, including a ravenous Wendigo that puts up quite a fight if you're not a particularly well-optimized character. Once we finish him off, we can make our way down the street to the west We'll find the Van Lowe Taxidermy Shop with another poster outside and make our way in. Once we're in the door, we can see some old taxidermy hanging on the walls, very nicely appointed area, and a sign pointing us to a hollow tape case, Wanted Sheep Squatch. Hello. I, I assume you're listening to me now because you followed the poster. Well, I'm Shelley Van Lowe, and I'm looking for my brother. Well, let me spoil the surprise now. My brother wasn't eaten by a damn sheep squatch. At least, that was the case. But I think Calvin's obsession with proving it exists may have more than a little to do with his disappearance. <sighs> Calvin. He's not right. Never has been. When he suddenly showed up in town after years of being away, I... I knew there was something strange going on. Next thing I know, he's vanished. All his belongings still here. Him? Gone. But it, it, it doesn't feel right. He didn't just move out again. I contacted the police about trying to find him. The war broke out. Well, I'm sure you know how it all went. So I'll get to the point. I'm leaving Lewisburg. I don't have a choice. But I, I can't just forget Calvin. If you think you can help, then please head up to the office on the third floor. See if you can pick up his trail. If Calvin is still out there, he needs to know I'm looking for him. And if he's not, well, I, I think that's something I need to know too. So Shelly Van Lowe is looking for her brother Calvin, who apparently was obsessed with something called a sheep squatch. She doesn't really think he was eaten by one, but he's missing and she needs help finding him. To do that, we're going to need to do a little more digging. First, we see a note sitting on the countertop, noise complaint. Proprietors of Van Lowe Taxidermy. Between the hours of 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. on the night of Saturday, September 27th, we received multiple complaints about loud construction noise originating from your store. This is a reminder that all businesses must abide by Noise Ordinance 2-942, active between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., including weekends. This letter should be treated as an official warning. Additional reports of failing to adhere to the code will result in a fine. Lewisburg Police Department. Scrawled at the bottom of the note is another note that says, apologies, they were supposed to keep it quiet. Signed, Bo Peep. Well, this just gets weirder and weirder. Let's check out the terminal. Looking at it briefly here, Van Lowe Taxidermy for employee use only. Please select an operation, shipments, 
and incoming outgoing orders. Let's start with shipments. Error, all shipping records have been deleted by user Calvin Van Lowe. User comments not applicable. Date of deletion 10977, just a couple weeks before the bombs. Shipping records have been locked by user Shelly Van Lowe. User comments, where are you, Calvin? Date of lock 102077, just three days before the bombs fell. When we look at incoming outgoing orders, things get a little more interesting. Archive of order receipts from Clark Interior and Furniture. First receipt, January 11th, 2076. Order form, star-nosed mole standing, grizzly bear standing hind legs, largemouth bass, wall mount. Incoming client comments, hi there Shelly, D. Outgoing comments, well hello there D, Shelly. Feels like maybe there's a little bit of flirtation going on, maybe those two know each other. Next receipt is April 2nd, 2076, a few months later. Order form, bullhead catfish wall mount, bullhead catfish centerpiece, bullhead catfish wall mount, black bear all fours. Incoming client comments, so what do you think? D. Outgoing comments, I am available next week. I can't wait to see you. I wish we didn't have to talk this way, but I understand. And what is with this guy in catfish? Is he the same client from last month? S. So another conversation between D and Shelly. We'll have to dig further and see what else is going on. Four months later, we have a receipt from August. Oh, no, this is almost a year and a half later. August 2nd, 2077. Order form. Canada Goose spread wings. Oxhorn cigar rack. Custom piece. Wood duck sitting. Incoming client comments. Ms. Van Lowe. It would appear a number of holotape receipts have failed to be provided by your store over the last year or so. Deb's Pop always had kind words for your family and shop, and he highly recommended I continue this business relationship when we took the reins. I'd hate to make changes over something so trivial, but the lack of receipts has been a real headache for our bookkeeping. Signed Gregory Timmerman, Clark Interiors and Furniture. Outgoing comments, I'm so sorry, Mr. Timmerman, it seems our terminal in the storefront has been on the fritz. It will not happen again. Sincerely, Shelly Van Lowe, Van Lowe Taxidermy. So she's got a much more professional demeanor this time. This Gregory Timmerman person has apparently taken over the Clark Interiors and Furniture business. So let's keep going and see what else we have to learn. Our next receipt is about two months later on October 7th of 2077. Order form insect collection display, rainbow trout wall mount, special order oak, moosehead imported, black bear. Incoming client comments. I'm sorry, I've told Greg that I will make paper copies of the receipts from now on. Can we talk? Deb. P.S. I think I saw your brother in town. Is he back? Outgoing comments. Yes, Deb, we can talk again. I wasn't mad. I was just worried about you. I've missed you so much. And yes, Calvin is back in town. He's on a project from work. I don't know, Deb, he's acting like his old self again, going out in the middle of the night, locking himself away all day. I don't know what to make of it. I could really use that birthday trip we talked about. If you're still up for it, meet me here Friday night. Shelly. And now we have a refund order from 1019 of 2077. Outgoing supplier comments. Calvin is missing. He must have left when we were away, I think. That's the only thing that makes sense. When I got home, the office was locked, so I figured he was just in there. Then a whole day went by and it was still locked. I banged and screamed, but there was no answer. I ended up taking an axe to the damn thing, if you can believe it. No sign of him. Something isn't right. I can just feel it. All of his belongings are still here. His work, research, even his clothes. He didn't just leave this time. He's, I don't know, missing, gone. I'm scared. I, I don't know what to do. I feel like this is my fault. Shelly. Incoming client comments. Shelly, calm down. Talk to the police. I'll make sure Greg can watch Carver tonight. We'll find him. Deb. And this is an interesting note. Remember that Greg is Gregory Timmerman. Carver. We know another Carver who appeared with the Wastelanders quest line. We'll get to that in a minute. 
one last entry, pending response, November 17th, 2077, a few weeks after the bombs. Incoming comments. Shelly, you weren't in the shop. I couldn't think of anything else to do but leave another one of these tapes. Please be okay. Please find me when you read this. It's just Carver. He's getting so skinny, Shell. I don't know what to do. His cough, it's terrible. I need you. We need you. It turns out that Carver Timmerman, presumably the son of Gregory and Deb, is someone we can actually go meet. The family's furniture business is still alive and well, or at least alive, and is moving goods with the Blue Ridge Caravan Company following the events of Wastelanders. These terminal entries were here since Wild Appalachia, so this must be a bit of foreshadowing by the writers. Let's see what he has to say when we talk to him. Did you want to trade? That name sounds familiar. Where are you from? Well, I was born around here, actually, but my mom moved us sometime after the war. Now we live in a settlement out in what used to be Kentucky, I guess. Maybe it still is Kentucky? I don't know. I tried reading some old geography textbooks as a kid. <sighs> well, seemed like a waste of time now, though. If we pay attention during the riding shotgun event, we actually learn that Shelley Van Lowe is still alive and well, living with the Timmermans, presumably in Kentucky. Is there no one else from your family that can run a shipment for you, Carver? Well, my mom used to do this before she got sick. And I guess Shelly could, but then we'd be down a trapper. Why do you ask? I'm not very good at this, am I? Prior to Patch 22, we could access Joanna Mayfield's terminal on the western side of the Big Bend Tunnel. She's the head of the Blue Ridge Caravan Company. That building is all boarded up after the latest update, indicating that changes are on the way for the location. So maybe we'll get access to it again later, maybe not. Either way, the terminal had an entry about the various merchants the caravan worked with, Carver Timmerman included. It read, Client Merchant, Timmerman Carver, Furs, Furniture, etc. Poor Deb, keep an eye on the boy, he's a fragile one. All of this tells us that every time we hear Shelley Van Lowe talking about leaving town, she's talking about leaving to be with Deb and Carver, who at the time were a young mother and child. Remember, we're seeing things over 20 years after the fact. Since then, we know that Deb has fallen ill, and there's no mention of Gregory Timmerman, Carver's dad. He could be dead, not an unreasonable post-apocalyptic assumption, or just left as a plot hole for us to speculate about. The fact that the head of the Blue Ridge Caravan Company seems to have some personal connection with Deb is interesting. This would likely mean she also has a personal connection with Shelley Van Lowe. Could we see a return of this character in the future? Time will tell. Let's keep searching the shop. After hitting a mysterious big red button, we open up a display case where we find a note that reads Knickknack Paddywhack. This just gets more and more interesting. My friend, Wolf. I know you can give a dog a bone, but what about a wolf? Head to the basement to find out. Good luck, black sheep. And that, of course, draws our attention to the strange bone which we can inspect and see that it says property of Calvin Van Lowe. Intriguing. We'll take that with us and see if we can track down any more clues inside the shop. Well, that's a strange goat head thing, but not a clue. We'll make our way upstairs and see what we can find there. In a sort of kitchen area, we'll find a note that says, where is it? Security code, where is it? Office, no. Store, no. Calvin's room, what is that weird note? My room, no. Basement, I guess so. Who, black sheep, wolf, Bo Peep. This note, clearly written by Shelley, points us in a few different directions. She was looking for Calvin's security code and couldn't find it, and was apparently as confused as we are about all these nursery rhyme code names. That'll all make sense later. Turning around to explore the apartment, we see some interesting not taxidermy on the wall. Just a couple of rad roaches that are creatively placed. Bravo, Bethesda, I didn't see that coming. Very good job. Not the most formidable of opponents, but a little jump scare is always fun. 
turning to the east, we see Shelly's bedroom. We can take a look around here, see if we find any interesting clues. If nothing else, she's got a typewriter and a desk fan we can steal. But more importantly, a holotape. Life with Calvin. My little brother Calvin and I grew up in this strange old place. Our folks ran the shop downstairs, and when they passed, business ended up with me. Calvin was always the odd sort. And smart, too. After college, he ran off to work for some big shot company out of state. Barely heard from him after that. Calvin has um, conditions, the obsessions. Yeah, a, a research project? No, I didn't buy it. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if this had nothing to do with his job, if he even had one. The last time I saw Calvin was right before I went away for the weekend. Not even a goodbye. When I came back, he was gone. The only thing Calvin ever cared about was this goddamn sheep squatch. I, I know that's the root of his disappearance. I have no doubt about it. I think it's important to note here that Shelley isn't concerned that Calvin was hurt by a sheep squatch. It's his obsession that she's worried about. That, coupled with this out-of-state company, leads us to only more questions. Let's check his bedroom and see what else we can find. Note to self. Note to uh, self, Calvin. Keep it together. I have, I mean, you have no job to do. You can't be distracted by your academic pursuits. No, no, no. Fantasy. This is too important. So, repeat after me. The Sheep Squatch isn't real. The Sheep Squatch isn't real. But, if it is, then I could... Oh, interesting. I hadn't considered that. I wonder if I still have that article about the, uh, uh... No, 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 hey, no! Stay focused, stay on task. If you screw up, you know what will happen. So, <laughs> this is so stupid. Calvin, me, <laughs> just, just, just concentrate. God, and get back to work. So Calvin is clearly trying to overcome his obsessive tendencies in regard to the Sheep Squatch. It's affecting his professional life, it's affecting his mental state, and he's trying to do what he can to overcome it, but he's struggling. Next, we find another note, Dear Wolf. My friend Wolf, I imagine you're here to follow my trail. I've left what you'll need in a display case downstairs. Good luck. Black sheep. And an additional notation at the bottom from Shelly, what the hell is this? So someone was coming to find Calvin Van Lowe, and that someone was codenamed Wolf. Next, we find Calvin's office, complete with a hole in the door and an ax next to it where Shelly attempted to break the door down. Let's head inside and see what else we can figure out. On the northeastern wall of the office, we see what is all too typical of investigators and conspiracy theorists with all kinds of photos and images connecting dots for his research into the Sheep Squatch. There are also notes on here that if we read them, they'll give us additional side quests. I'm not going to do those right now. They're not actually directly related to the Lying Low quest line. They don't provide us with any information about this topic at all. They're just fun little side quests, and we'll explore those in separate videos in the future. For now, we can just take a look and see some of the artwork up here. We've got sketches of a sheep squatch. We've got spots on the map where events occurred that he was investigating, so clearly Calvin was quite obsessed with the Sheep Squatch and cryptids. 
We can see a tabloid cover here. Strange shapes in the sky, sheer terror. So he's been investigating this for a while and clearly obsessed. We can also see that he's got some interesting taste in art with this intentionally lit painting. Now, I don't know if this is a real world painting that maybe there's a, maybe this is an Easter egg thrown in there for, uh, for fans of that artist. But uh, it's definitely an odd one with a vulture picking at the bones of an animal carcass. And it's clearly intentionally lit. Let's check his terminal and see what we can find. Initially, we'll find two main entries, research, security code required, and personal documents. So we can't get access to this part of the terminal. We need to find Calvin's security code. We can see our quest updated. But now we'll look at personal documents. Please read from Shelly. This is Shelly. I wanted to make sure I left this someplace where you'd see it, Calvin. I'm leaving Lewisburg. It's gotten too dangerous here, and there's people I'm caring for now that need my protection. If you've come back, you'll know where to find me, where Mom and Dad said we'd always live someday. And if this is a sheep squatch hunter reading this and listening to the tapes I left, well, I hope it's providing enough clues to pick up my brother's trail. I want to stay here until I've solved this, but... All right, that's enough. Goodbye, Lewisburg. Next, we see the Truth Seekers meeting archives. We have three separate meetings spanning across seven years, starting with one in April of 2070. System, now beginning Truth Seekers meeting for April 2nd, 2070. This meeting will be auto-dictated for records. System, roll call, Scott, Scoot Conroy, Calvin, Cal, Van Lowe, Ray, Gary. Ray, okay, well, let's begin. The first order of business to bring up is Cal's ridiculous new haircut. Unintelligible laughter. Cal, yeah, all right, laugh it up like you don't know a thing or two about getting terrible haircuts, Scoot. Scoot, I've had the same haircut since grade school. Ray, exactly. Unintelligible laughter, Ray, okay, okay, but down to business. Have you guys read about that lumbering hairy beast seen up by Grafton? Scoot already debunked by that guy over in Point Pleasant. It was just an old minecart filled with dirty laundry. Ray, crud. What's that guy looking into a sheep squatch sighting? Doesn't he have a mothman to track down? Scoot. Maybe he finally decided to hunt for a real cryptid. Ray, must be. I don't have anything else. Cal, anything turn up on your end? Cal, no. I've been studying, like, for school studying. Scoot, you what? Unintelligible laughter. Cal, I'm serious. I need... I need to focus more. It's important I get into VTU. I... Error, too quiet, unable to dictate. Ray, all right, all right, meeting adjourned. See you guys next month. System dictation stopped. Auto dictation for 729-2072. System roll call. Scott Scoot Conroy, Calvin Calvan Lowe, Ray Gary. Ray, okay, well, let's get started on the uh, final meeting of the Truth Seekers for a while. Cal, I guess I'll make a statement for the record. I will be beginning my first semester at Vault Tech University in about a month, so I won't have time for cryptid hunting for a few years. Ray, congratulations again, Cal. Error, too quiet, unable to dictate. Ray, well, uh, unfortunately, I don't have much to report. There was a sighting last week over by Uncanny Caverns, but turned out to just be an albino bear, so Cal, anything? Cal, sorry, no. Ray, all right, scoot, scoot, no. Ray, meeting adjourned then. System dictation stop. More system dictation for 923-2077. System, roll call, Calvin, Cal Van Lowe, Ray Gary. Ray, okay then, let's get started. It's good to have you back, Cal, even if it's just for today. I'm sorry the other members couldn't make it. Some have to travel pretty far these days. Cal. Oh, no problem. It's been so long, I'm just glad we could make the time. Still no word from Scoot? Ray. No. He hasn't been around in months. He doesn't show up to these anymore. I'm just barely able to keep in touch with him these days. Cal. Ah, that's too bad. Ray. Yeah. Cal. So, I wanted to just talk a bit, see if you and the other members maybe have heard anything lately. 
Strange sightings, things wandering around the woods, the uh, usual. Ray, not really, just some random police reports of people thinking they saw something late at night, but we pick up that kind of thing at least once or twice a month. Never leads to anything interesting. Cow, I see. Ray, and ever since I've been in the chair, it's been harder for me to get around myself, so it's cow. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Ray, I didn't mean to. Ray, it's fine. I've gotten used to it, been a few years, but it's made personal investigations harder. I mostly just try to make these meetings to pass knowledge on to the new guys. Cal, yeah. Error, too quiet, unable to dictate. Cal, well, I really ought to be going. I'm just in town for work and... Ray, be well, Cal. I mean it. I see that look in your eyes. Be well. Cal, yeah, of course, I... Yes, I will. Dictation stopped. And we have one more entry listed as null. A note from the big bad wolf. Black sheep, I saw the letter you left me in your bedroom. Very cute, but I don't need help following your trail. Your time is up. Don't make this difficult. The big bad wolf. Having now found all the clues we can find in the apartment, we can head down to the basement to see what that mysterious bone was all about. And I do find it a little odd at this point that this man, Wolf, is clearly threatening Calvin. He knows he's coming for him. But Calvin is leaving him clues as to how to find him. Is this a trap? Is this all an elaborate ruse? We'll find out. As we head downstairs, we find a locked door. Let's go ahead and pick that lock and see if there's anything interesting behind the door. And in this case, it's just some junk and weird stuff. We've got a uh, one of the automatronic aliens from Nuka World with its head mounted on the wall, some light bulbs and jack-o'-lantern head on its body. Nothing really super notable in here, but uh, it's fun to open the door and take a look. Let's head back downstairs. When we make it down to the basement, we see some more taxidermy and find that we're getting attacked by a rad rat. There you are. And now you are dead. Very good, easy enough. Nothing too challenging so far on the quest. After dealing with our rodent infestation, we find a mounted wolf head and can place the strange bone in its mouth to reveal a safe with Calvin's security code and a little more information. Terminal security code, a squatch in sheep's clothing, mission briefing, operation, Mary's little lamb, field operative, black sheep, CVL, so that's Calvin Van Lowe, handler, Bo Peep, fixer, big bad wolf, site, Lewisburg. So Calvin Van Lowe is involved in some kind of underground secret operation that he says is for this out-of-state company he works for. Maybe it's a government cover. This just got even more interesting. But now we have a security code, so let's head back up to his office and see if there's any more information for us. With security code in hand, we can now enter the research section of his terminal and see what we can find. Two entries, Sheep Squatch 2070 to 2072, and Research Project 2077. Let's check out the earlier one first. Sheep Squatch Field Research, number one. February 20th, 2070. Hunters, me, Ray, and Scoot. Location, farmland, Route 63. Rumor, sheep disappearing. Exploring hypothesis that Sheep Squatch eats sheep. This one is Scoot's idea. Findings, I told the guys this was a stupid lead. I'd bet money that Scoot is a cannibal before the Sheep Squatch is. Turns out it was just the neighbor stealing the sheep. Obviously. Sheep Squatch field research number two. April 2nd, 2071. Hunters, me, Ray, Scoot. Location, Point Pleasant Trails. Rumor, strange tracks found on trails near Point Pleasant, provided by a fellow cryptid hunter from the area. Findings. I had high hopes here, but we couldn't find any tracks. 
Sheep Squatch Field Research number three. March 25th, 2071, Hunters Just Me, location Uncanny Caverns, Hills. Rumor, strange white animals spotted in the area. Findings, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I just barely caught a glimpse. A beautiful white blur, long horns. It was on four legs, surprising. But why haven't I considered that? It's real, it's really real. I need to tell Scoot and Ray. Not real. October 20th, 2071. Stop it. It's been months. It's not real. Why do I have to keep reminding myself? What is wrong with me? Of course, we know from an earlier entry that the sheep squatch he thought he saw at Uncanny Caverns was just an albino bear. Still not real. July 2nd, 2072. I have to stop. It's not real. I have to tell the guys I can't do this anymore. It's not real. I can't keep doing this to myself. It's not real. I have to study. I can't let this control my life. It is not real. Calvin clearly struggling with his obsessions. Now we can look at Research Project 2077. Sheep Squatch sighting Lewisburg. September 10th, 2077. Report. Witnesses reported something unusual wandering around Lewisburg shortly after 11 p.m. Police were notified, but no patrol car was dispatched. Comments. Something unusual walking around the streets at night? Hardly anything to write home about. Need to spread out more. Sheep Squatch sighting Uncanny Caverns. October 4th, 2077. Report. A creature spotted by a witness wandering around the hills near Uncanny Caverns. Witness reported this to the police station directly. Police statement claims the witness was visibly intoxicated. Likely a teen getting drunk behind the old sign again. Comments. I've had some good luck with Uncanny Caverns in the past, but this didn't go as well as I had hoped. Need to look for places with more reliable witnesses. On hold. October 6, 2077. After the last attempt, it's clear I'm going to need better resources to pull this off. Need to stay focused. Remember what's important. At this point, it's clear that Calvin is up to something more than cryptid hunting, but I'm still not sure what. One last entry, reminder, meet Bo Peep. Reminder message, meet Bo Peep at Bastion Park for a demonstration. Don't be late, and then we can download the coordinates. So Bo Peep is his handler in this clandestine operation that he's involved in, Wolf is the fixer. So Bo Peep is the person who guides him along, manages him, gets him going and doing the things that they want him to do. Wolf is the person who will likely put bullets in their heads if things don't go as planned. And now we know that his next stop was Bastion Park to do a demonstration of whatever it was he was working on for Bo Peep. And that's where we'll go in our next episode. If you don't want to miss it, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. This will be a three-part series, and there will be even more lore and story videos in the future. For now, it's time for me to go. Till next time, I'm Fisty McRib.